Go 95.3 here and joining me on the line is one of the most influential, impactful and successful artists in hip hop history. His fingerprints have been all over the genre and culture for the past 30 years. And he is coming Saturday night to Treasure Island for Hammer's house party. The one and only Hammer. Hammer, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I am wonderful, thank you. So I'm very excited about seeing you performing tomorrow. It's you, Tone Loke, Rob Bass, Kid and Play, and it's the perfect time of year for it as well. And you've been on this house party tour with curations of different classic, old school artists all year long. So what's it been like bringing all these uh, classic songs of yours on the road? Oh, it's been it's been exhilarating. Um... You know, every night the energy between the, you know uh, that we get from the crowd and between us and the crowd together, uh, we we lift the clouds up the clouds up higher. We raise the roof. It's uh it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. So we we've been enjoying it every night, every city. A um, lot of uh, great memories and good times. Hey, spectacular. And one cool thing is the meet and greets you've been doing at these shows. And when I mentioned you being so influential, you were really the first artist to have so many endorsements so many products to really transcend just the music of hip-hop and to bring so many elements of the culture around so in these meet and greets i'm curious has there been any particularly cool uh, piece of merchandise or thing that you've gotten to sign or discuss with fans um yeah the fans have everything so somebody will have uh hammer doll somebody will have uh the, the Hammer cartoons, uh, you know, they'll have the DVD of, of, of the cartoons. They'll have, you know, the two legit to quit long version video with, with the Godfather James Brown um, in that video. And, of course, a long list of luminaries from all uh, all of the entertainment world and sports from, from, from Roger Clemens to uh, Ricky Henderson to David Robinson to... Easy E to, you know, you Mark, Mark Wahlberg. I mean, uh, to Queen Latifah, the list goes on and on. The two of just a quick, long version of the video uh, was epic. Uh, and uh, so anyway, they'll have that, and I'll sign that. And, and uh, just a bunch of, bunch of memorabilia. Awesome. And you're coming back to Minnesota, and you have many wonderful Minnesota connections. A big one, and especially because we're talking today on the 40th anniversary of his iconic self-titled sophomore album is Prince and Prince over the course of his life, very, very, very seldom cleared sampling in the use of his music. And one of which was for when doves cry for your single prey. So I'm wondering how did that come together with you and Prince and getting the permission to uh, recreate his iconic song into such an iconic song of your own? Well, one of the things is that, that he approved of the lyrical content and, and, and what I was saying with the song. So I didn't uh, take the song and just, you know, do do nothing with it in terms of substance. You know, um, my idea and concept for Doves Cry that I heard in that melody, um, I, I turned into a song, you know, called We Got to Pray Just to Make It Today. And I think that had a lot to do with uh, getting his approval getting Prince's approval recipes, as well as um, he had already seen um, where I was going as an artist. This is, uh, you know, it's my second album. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, well, technically it was my third, but it was my second main, you know, uh, major label album. And my first album that he knew of, the Let's Get It Started, I had, I had did 100 tour dates, and I was already uh, at the point where, you know, people were coming in from everywhere, uh, to, to watch my performances, all you know, all my peers and, and artists from Mother John runs as well as you know, the, you know, the, the, the late uh, great recipes Michael Jackson as well. All, all of them were coming to my shows, and so Prince knew that I was a hardworking artist. Uh, he knew that I had a lot of love and respect for him. And on that same album, um, I also covered on Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him. I covered Soft and Wet as well. So I'm not just like a casual. Uh, Prince fan. I'm a huge Prince fan. I put two of his songs on Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him. Excellent. And I'm sure it's going to be great to hear that live uh, and re-echoing here uh, as those those sounds, you know, return to, uh, you know, the, the beautiful area it, it came from. 
So um, speaking of you working with luminaries, and because it is the Halloween time of year, one of my favorite videos of yours was Adam's Groove that featured so much of the cast of the original live action Adam's Family films from the early 90s. And one of my favorite actors was right there grooving with you in the video, uh, Raul Julia. So uh, what was it like uh, dancing with him? Oh, man, he, he was just a wonderful guy, rest in peace. I mean, uh, we had so much fun. Uh, on the set, you know, we, we did three or four, you know, solo routines together, uh, he and I, um, one dancing with the swords, another one, a dance off, another one, I was trying to take his, his wife from him. <laughs> and, uh, he was just a pure gentleman, a, a pure gentleman, um, kind hearted, easy to work with. Um, uh, one, one of my most memorable moments. And by the way, that song was made in Paisley Park. Oh, Wow. So I was, I came to Paisley Park to make the entire team just quit out. I stayed, um, I stayed there for two months and, um, had a great time. I, I just knew it would be the right place to make the album. Um, uh, and when I thought I was finished, I got a call from Paramount Pictures and, and a label. Literally, I think I was in studio, uh, A at Paisley Park and, 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 and they, I put them on loudspeaker and they said, you know, Hammer. Will you make a, a song for our movie? I said, I finished my album. I'm, I'm mixing down now. We're done. And, 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 and they said, well, do you think you can come up uh, for something for the Adams family? So uh, I hung up the phone and looked over at uh, um, my co-producer at that time, uh, Doug Pilot, and I said, Doug, I got an idea. Um, give me a James Brown movie. And he gave me an idea. I said, what I hear is they do what they want to do. Say what they want to say. Live how they want to live. Play how they want to play the Adams family. I said, let's do that. And, I'm, and so we put that record together and got it back to him. And it became one of my biggest selling singles of all time. We, we sold five million of those singles worldwide. It was a big song, but that song and the album, Two Legit to Quit, were all Minnesota, Minneapolis, you know, made right here. And I say right here because I'm here now. Oh, it's, I was wondering why it suddenly got warmer today. And that explains uh, the energy, bringing the heat. Oh, oh kind of. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of songs you've done for films too, a uh, personal favorite of mine um, and video as well is uh, the track uh, with Deion Sanders from the Street Fighter soundtrack, the uh, Straight to My Feet, and which had uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme making a rare appearance in the video as well. Uh, what was it like making that one? I had a lot of fun as well. Jean-Claude is a uh, funny guy. He, he's a, like a, not, I won't say comedian, but he loves to joke. Um, and so uh, we went in and did that, Dion and I, prime time, and uh, that was that was a great day. I mean, you know, we had the camouflage, you know, uh, outfits on. I'm former military, so I I was having fun with that. And this movie was built around the game, you know, around the game, and uh, special forces was a part of the game, so it was great. Well, Dion got a chance to dance, rap. He loved it. He, that, that was part of his persona, and we both just went at it and said, "Let's make something fun." And Van Damme was the greatest. That's a beautiful thing. And then a few years after that, a record you put out that meant a lot to me that doesn't really get talked about as much for as important as it was, was active duty. Um, Because in 2001, in the wake of 9-11, the common narrative now in a lot of music journalism is that hip hop was largely silent and kind of slow to address what had happened with the 9-11 terrorist attacks. But you put out active duty within two months of it happening. So I was wondering, uh, what was it like... uh, releasing music in that sort of climate and really pushing through and, and shooting uh, that video as well? Well, um, number one, um, uh, I, I'm being former military uh, and being connected to both first and our own soil, so being connected to the soil here that, that we live on and being, being connected to the earth secondary. Um, I, I was I was per- personally offended. Um, by uh, the attack on, you know, on our soil, on New York. It, it, you know, uh, hip-hop, besides New York being what it is, it is also the home of hip-hop. And hip-hop, you know, changed a lot of lives in our community. And as, you know, at that time was continuing to, to touch the world. And so just to have this happen to New York City, to have this happen to the home of hip-hop, to have this happen to America, I was offended on, on, on many levels. Uh, to the extent that I even uh, talked about uh, uh, signing up uh, for a new, you know, 
renewing. And and so uh, when I made active duty, it was from a personal place, and I ended up going up, uh, you know, to Capitol Hill, and for the first time ever, uh, they allowed, uh, you know, members of Congress and everybody else both inside on the floor, they voted to let them be in the video and come out and join me both outside and inside. And it was just all about rallying the people uh, and saying, you know, let's stand together and, you know, thank you to our country. That's what it was all about. And that's that's wonderful. And I think it really captures so much of that feeling and that coming together that, you know, when you have like the media around that time showing just feeling united and going toward it's, it's a really important record. And thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, finally, given with this big show going on Saturday night and being it is a celebration of so much of your career, so many of the huge hits, the multi-million selling singles, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, aside from your signature songs, everyone knows, is there a particular song from any point in your career that you're really personally proud of that you wish was more well-known amongst your fans? Oh, that's a great question. So, um, uh, and the answer is uh, yes, but but guess what? It's discovery is such a huge part today of, of social media, you know, um, of all these uh, various platforms, and they all want things that are special. Uh, I'm saying that to say that the good news is that the, uh, many new generations get to discover all kinds of hammer records that you just, you'll say, man, First of all, because of the way we produced them, the production doesn't sound dated. We didn't go with, you know, uh, the, the, the drum machine of the moment. So the production still sounds sounds good. I was just listening to his. I, I just came in from New York, and while I was in the, uh, while the driver was, you know, taking me down there, I, I was listening to uh, Everything's All Right, which is from the Inside Out album, which has songs on there that Tupac loved so much. Yeah, and Tupac... At the time that he was incarcerated in New York, um, he told me that he sent his girlfriend out to get the Inside Out album because the song Keep On, which samples Luther Vandross, which, which Luther Vandross gave me permission as well because he loved the local content and what I was talking about. But Tupac said that was his favorite Hammer song ever. And uh, it helped him get through from day to day while he was uh, locked up uh, in Rikers Island. Um, and and that, that, that is one of my favorite records. So there are records from that album, from other albums, subsequent that I will continue to uh, either perform, introduce uh, via new videos, and remix them, and it'll be new discovery for people going forward. So that's, that's the blessing of them not being as known as much in the past, but being able to introduce them to people going forward. Wonderful. And it really shows, like you said, the timelessness of so much of it. And I'm looking very forward to seeing a lot of these timeless records, uh, either the ones I'm super familiar with or some brand new ones and having that communal experience. Uh, Saturday night at Treasure Island with for Hammer's House Party with you, Rob Bass, Tone Loke, and Kid and Play. Hammer, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless.